Some people think that the DAC chip is all that matters for sound in a DAC. Others argue that chips make no difference and it's all about the output stage, power supply and filters. The SMSL PS200 is a $90 tiny digital to analog converter that focuses exclusively on measurements. Is it a good approach? It's a very small and lightweight box. It can fit easily in the palm of my hand. Furthermore, it's so light that it's very easy for it to get pulled by the connected cables. It doesn't feel super fancy or anything. Likewise, it's made out of plastic. What's interesting, they use the same shell as on the PS100 to reduce the manufacturing and R&D costs. On the front, there is a rectangular button which is used to control the DAC's inputs and power it on or off. The top of the unit features an engraved SMSL logo. It's one of my favorite ways of branding. It looks way better than regular printed text or a logo. What do you think about this sort of branding? Don't forget to let me know in the comments down below. It uses a USB-C connector for power. No matter if you're also using it for data, it has to be plugged into a phone charger or some other sort of linear PSU. There is a USB 1.1 and 2.0 switch, made to increase compatibility with older devices and maximize performance with newer ones. Next to it, there is an optical input, which can be a good idea if you're trying to use it with a noisy source like a computer's motherboard. Toslink uses light as a form of communication. Unlike electrons, it can't transfer any electrical noise. Lastly, there is a regular coaxial input, going through an RCA plug. For the analog outs, we have a single-ended pair of RCAs. You can't expect such small and inexpensive deck to be balanced. Moreover, going single-ended cuts down on the cabling costs as XLR cables tend to be significantly more expensive. It also makes the process easier for beginners, as they don't have to worry about so many things and make so many difficult choices. Finally, there is Bluetooth 5.0 for wireless audio. Please press the like button. Thanks! The output voltage is flat 2 volts RMS which is a standard for RCA. Its THD plus N is at 0.0001% or minus 180 decibels. The dynamic range as well as the signal to noise ratio are 123 decibels. It means one thing and one thing only. The internals are not purposefully messed up and it measures fairly well. It can decode up to 768 kHz PCM at 32 bit. The maximum DSD rate is also very, very high, 512. For USB decoding, it uses a third generation XMOS solution. I'm starting to see a pattern with the XU316 chip. SMSL almost always uses this one. For digital to analog conversion, ES9039Q2M chip is being used. That's a good chip, one of the higher end ones from ESS. It also has four dual op-amp chips, presumably in the output stage. If you have watched this video so far, consider subscribing to my channel. Looking at the measurements and the chips, which are both good, would indicate that it has to sound great. However, the truth is a little different. Luckily, it doesn't sound terrible, wrong or off in any way. In less resolving setups, DAX don't make such a huge difference that this device could be a limiting factor. At some point, I'm sure it's going to be. For example, my reference speaker setup, being quite resolving, shows clear signs of system mismatch. It doesn't sound unpleasant or collapsed, but I definitely wouldn't build such a system with high-end speakers, an expensive amplifier and such a budget-oriented DAC. On the other hand, the PS200 can do a fantastic job in many cases. Dedicated headphone amplifiers with budget to lower medium range headphones or even active speakers are some of them. Regarding its sound characteristics, the tonality is just fine, with a slight bright tilt. It's important, as the perceived tonality is one of the biggest factors. The bass punch is also there. ESS chips tend to overemphasize it slightly in my experience. Nonetheless, while this DAC can perform well in some aspects, it can't do everything. Not at this price. The soundstage width doesn't seem to be super wide. 
It doesn't shrink it down a lot, but it does it just a little bit. The sense of depth is also not there, but it's understandable, as that's something usually associated with high-end components. Timbral accuracy is not bad, but it has a slight plasticky sound added to strings or brass sound sources. If you feel like your hi-fi system isn't worthy of a super expensive deck, or you care only about the measurements, or simply don't hear large differences between DACs, this one will be perfect for you, especially since it offers lots of audio formats and connection possibilities. I would consider it a perfect beginner-friendly option.